Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Welcome to the Hewlett Park in Granbury, Texas, in the Lone Star Street Rod Association's 49th Quick. Annual State wow. Run. I think we're going to... We should gonna, put a little fader in there or something. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do without that. And I'll tell you why in just a second. But welcome to the show, everybody. 49th Annual State Run from the Low Star Street Rod Yikes. Association. This is the In Will Time Car Talk Show. And just ahead, more attendees from this weekend's big show, plus our regular features, including new car reviews, Jeff's weekly unique feature. What is it? What, what makes it unique this week? Um, what am I doing this? Oh, how uh, uh, <laughs> that's what makes how it you unique. can uh, you look like an idiot when you drive because of your features in your car. Perfect. Let's put it that way. I I, I, I can relate. Don't to be that. an idiot. Uh, we got upcoming events, racing calendar, auto history. All that and more on today's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Con. No, I'm sorry. We need more. <laughs> we need more Jeff Zeke. There you go. Old habits die hard. Yep. We have with us today our chief, chief engineer and bottle washer, David mm. Ainsley. I'm Dot Armstrong. Glad you could join us today. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot going through what used to be it's a brain. It's been a rough week. It has been a rough week. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just one of those kind of deals. But That's okay. at any rate, thank you very much for joining us today. Hewlett Park, beautiful place and beautiful cars here, Mr. Mars. Yes, and joining us now is Mr. Larry Reynolds, and he has got this black and red 57 Chev uh, Ford. There it is. My Whoa. bad. You can hit me. <laughs> Ford Fairlane <laughs> sitting over here, and I'm not well, sure why I said that. I want you to know that I parked next to that car last night at the hotel, and I said to Leslie, I said, my God, I'm not a Ford man, but that car is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. You have done an excellent job and on that. And it rumbles. The color combination the way it's painted the black and the red the, the everything ju everything yeah. i just it just it, it pops I appreciate it, it yeah it works works good for me i can tell you that <laughs> so uh it, it's an honor to be with you because you did, did you do all that work yourself no sir uh this car was started back in 2010 a uh, gentleman by the name of troy prumphrey out of miami florida uh, came it's up. a Miami car. <laughs> there you go. Talking <laughs> about Miami. <laughs> and he came up with the concept and went from there. Uh, I bought the car in, on Christmas Eve 2018. Was oh, that your Christmas oh, present? Oh. That was my Christmas present. My dad had bought a brand new 57 Ford on Christmas Eve. And what 56. year is this one? That's a 57. 57. And my dad bought a brand new one on Christmas Eve 56 because they'd come out in October. Same and body style? Same same car. Gotcha. And, darn. and uh, I was six months old at the time. My mom was mad. Oh, she was mad because they didn't have money to put food on the table. A new kid and dad goes buys a new car. Of course. <laughs> what other thing? What else do you do? <laughs> right. But uh, uh, the, well, car, the car was basically like it is now when I uh, bought it. I changed the whole interior, the whole interior idea <laughs> and the trunk area. Uh, it originally had airbags on the front. I took that off and put coilovers all, all over um, <laughs> at all four corners. How hard was that? Uh, it wasn't bad. No? It, wasn't, it's, it wasn't bad. It's got a fat man front end, which is engineered for the car. Uh, it's got a 4.6 Mustang Cobra motor. And uh, the reason it doesn't have a Coyote motor is because the Coyote motor hadn't come out yet. Oh, it was so, this yet. Was, so in other words, this is on your Christmas list now. Well, the coyote. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But, so, uh, so it's the same, except it's different. It's the same, but it's different. That, you, that is actually an SVT motor. It did not come out of a car. It was a leftover crate motor. Now, you said you bought it in pretty much the condition it's in right now. Yes. Well, so what have you done to it personally? But, uh, what have you done to it uh, besides the interior? Did you do that yourself? or uh, oh, the coilers. Uh, you just said a that. A gentleman that, that, that I went to high school with, uh, his parents – had a upholstery business from the time I was in high school, which was a long time ago, uh, up until recently. And he, then after the mom and dad retired, he kept the business going. And so he was a real, real good friend of mine. And uh, uh, I came up with the idea, told him what I wanted, and he said, no problem. And uh, he, he did it out of his shop. And uh, he's now retired too, but uh, he does remarkable work and so 
so reasonable on the price because he's a one-man operation. Well, what's the name of his shop? Because upholsters are hard to find. Yeah, yeah but he's retired now. Oh, he, he never mind. He are retired you, last year. Neither one of y'all are paying attention, apparently. <laughs> well, I, I, I just missed the retired. I heard him talking yeah. about that. Yeah, but the name of the business was Poor Boys <laughs> Enterprises. <laughs> the information isn't flowing down this far. As well. Yeah, it's the wind <laughs> blowing it back. But... Uh, the car is kind of like a Christine. Seems like every time I go Uh-oh. somewhere in it, something breaks. Did something Uh-oh. break on it this trip? It did. What? Uh, I've got a bad brake caliper on the rear, and I had to stop once and and throw water on it to cool it off where it would unlock. And Oh, wow. So, so it's hanging up. It's hanging up. So, yeah. so that's got to be addressed when so we get back to the house. What kind of calipers have gone on it? They're four-wheel disc. Uh, is it a Will Woods? Or? It's not Will Woods. Uh, it's just... Uh, I'm not real sure, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't think they're an aftermarket, actually. Really? So, yeah. So how far did you drive it that it from it was It was probably, let's see, 100 miles here. Okay. So, so where, are you, where are you from? Just Garland, just, Texas. Where are Garland? That's not far. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Straight and, to the lake. And I've drove, drove, you know, I don't own a trailer, so everywhere I go, I drive the car. I've been to Oklahoma City in it. Been to Mena, Arkansas, Street Rod Meet up there in it. So it's rel- relatively reliable. Yes. Does yes, it have it, an AC in it? Of course. It's Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you got vintage air in it? It's vintage air. Yep. It works very well. It's got a uh, five-speed Tramic, so it's got the overdrive. And with the modern motor, I get 20 miles a gallon on the highway. Very nice. So Premium. Uh, premium. Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> so where did you find an SVT crate engine? Uh, like I said, Troy built the car. He found the motor somewhere. I don't know. Went to a dealership or had some connections with Ford or whatever. But uh, he uh, he came up with Because you motor. don't hear of those sitting in, a, in, in anywhere anymore, right. especially yeah, in, right. a, in a parts department of a Ford Motor Company uh, right. dealership. Right. You know, and those motors are hand-built. They've got the uh, Xenma where uh, the guy signed it that built actually built the motor so um it's it's reliable i sure hope our tent doesn't blow away no, we got us fine. a pretty good breeze blowing here Feels i good. have to tell you nice. that i'll take uh, yeah, the breeze you know exactly because yeah if you've been you've been coming in lone star street rod well, association member was, for a while yes i think Two years ago, it was 105, uh, 110 yes. out here. Oh, at uh, least 150 is what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I left about 11 that morning. I said, I've had a heat stroke before. I can't do this. Right, yeah. So, it was warm. So, it, yeah. It's a beautiful morning here. It absolutely right. truly is. Right. Uh, so um, what do you plan on gaining on uh, today's show? New friends? Always. That, you know, I wouldn't have any friends if it wasn't for the car, sure. <laughs> car people. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, and uh, do, do you get... Do you get uh, trophied a lot? Every now and then. <laughs> just every now and then? <laughs> just every now and then. It depends on what, you, it what just, show you put it in. It just depends on uh, the judges. I mean, you know, if you got young judges or old judges or uh, a lot of this day and time, uh, a lot of the shows are participant judging, so all the car clubs get to vote, and they vote on each other's car. Sure. And, and Do you take it to new events that they haven't seen the car yet? Yes, uh, actually, I'm I'm planning on going to Temple in October. They've got a big meet down there. They we have a friend of ours that lives there by yeah. the name of George Skelton. And George, if you're listening, he's coming to see you. It's uh, Ribs and Rod show down there in October. Oh. And uh, th- last time I went, I think they drew six or seven hundred cars. Wow. It's wow. a huge park. That'd be a great place for us to get invited to. Yes. Yes, it would. Yeah. yeah so it, it, pull it, your strings. <laughs> I don't have any strings. No strings over there. <laughs> I'm the oddball. I drive a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. A 57 Ford. Well, it is stunningly yeah. beautiful. And did you know Ford outsold Chevrolet in 57? No, I did not know that. Yes, Ford outsold Chevrolet. That's interesting, especially with the yeah. with the iconic 57 yeah. Chevrolet. And, and what amazed me, uh, I had a real good friend. He's passed away now. But uh, – he worked at a Chevrolet dealership in 56, and when the 57 come out, the owner tried to find every 56 he could find because nobody liked He could liked sell them, and nobody liked yes. the, the tail fins. Yeah, oh, nobody the liked 57. I'll be darned. Yeah, but uh, hmm. just, uh, you know, remarkable. You know, you see one Ford out of 100 Chevrolets now. Well, and you know, if, you think, if you think about it long enough, 
that was such a radical design, the 57 Chevrolet with, right. the, with the tail fins on right, it. Right, exactly. Nobody had ever seen anything like that before. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think it took a while for that to catch on or, right. or not because they changed it completely. That's a one-year model only. It's not mm -hmm. a 55 or a 56 like behind you. Right. The 57 is a one-year only model, and, uh, and 58 completely changed. Right. Yeah. Went back to the regular right. tail end on it. Yeah. Right. Quad yeah. headlights yeah. and things. Yeah. yeah. And 58s didn't sell that well because the economy wasn't doing that well. Right. So, yeah. and it was a one year car. Yeah. But, uh, uh, huh. but How hard are parts to find for a 57 Ford? Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's um, a couple of uh, reproduction companies, uh, Carpenters, one of them. Uh, he has a lot of stuff for the Fords, but uh, not they're they're not. Well, you don't see that many of them. No, no. And and with you telling us that that Ford outsold the '57 Chevrolet, you would think that there would be a market, an aftermarket for parts for that car, but apparently not. Yeah, well, I'm I'm assuming uh, the Fords rusted real bad, and uh, and. Ford just wasn't as popular as Chevrolet. Well, and I think maybe the engine, because if you think about it, a lot of these, like these 32s and these 27s that are sitting over here, a lot of them run Chevrolet power plants. Right. So small the small block, block Chevy was really powerful. Oh, yeah. And not too many guys are going to put a small block Chevy in a Ford like right. that. Exactly. So, so that, you, that is a no-go for me. Well, that's what I'm saying. I am so, sorry. So if the, it's a Ford, it better have a Ford engine. The popularity as as in it right, kind of right. kind of loses some mm -hmm. because of the, the, the power. I think that's right. the reason I think they weren't so popular. Right. One they of the buy another car. Don't put an other engine. No, no, in. I, that's what I'm saying. They didn't, and that's the reason it's not popular. Yeah. I mean, it, what was it? Three twelves, two seventy twos, and three twelves. Yeah, and it just yeah. you know the look at you, Mars. How did you know about that? I had one. Did you? I had a three twelve engine. In what car? Ford. <laughs> trying to remember. No, actually, I was trying to put it into a 65 Mustang instead of a 289. I thought bigger cubic inch and more. Anyway, no, that's a different yeah. story. <laughs> but, but either uh, way. Yeah, you're speaking of, <laughs> you speaking of uh, Ford in a Ford, it reminded me. In 2019, I took this car to cruising the coast in Biloxi. Yeah, I've probably been heard about yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Street Rider Magazine picked that car best Ford in a Ford. And I got a real nice jacket. And it was going to be in Street Rider Magazine. But the month it was supposed to be in is when Motor Trend bought out all the magazines. Yeah. And so, so it didn't make the magazine. Killed it. Killed it. But I got the article anyway. Well, that's good for you because I, I was on the uh, end when I was doing some freelance work. I had uh, three magazines that Interstellar bought and, and just shut them down one day. They just said, right. oh, no more. And, right. and Street Rider was one of the most popular magazines out there. Oh, yeah. I, I just didn't get it at all. It was it was bean counters. That's all I'm going to well, say. Well, the, the, the whole TV thing is all jacked up now too because yeah. there's no more motor trend tv discovery plus discovery Pl that what? plus kills you what yeah you got to stream everything yeah yeah it'll yeah. get you yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let's see how we can scam everybody out of every last it's all about nickel. the dollar yep. yeah yeah that yeah they can the possibly dollar. make well guess what yeah i ain't watching anymore i, ain't either. <laughs> and I bet you. you everybody else the same way if it don't come on my dish I don't get it. Yep. Well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, what What a shame. So do you plan any other changes other than your brake issue? Do you have any other changes in store? No, not really. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. I mean. It seems you, to be, what, like you said, real reliable, the, the, dependable. Yeah. The perp, one of the main things I get out of a car, if, if when I get out of that car and I turn around and look at it again, I know that's the car. Because I just, I love. You I'm, still have I, that feel for it. Yeah. It. You know, I, there's nothing I don't like about the car. I mean, I love the color. I love the stance, uh, you know. I do, too. And I'm not a Ford guy. Right. But I like and, it, too. And I had a, uh, when I was in Autorama a few years ago, uh, the guy that judged my car, which it won't do that well in Autorama because it does have road, you know, a couple. It's a driver. It's a driver, so it's not an Autorama car. But um, he, the judge came around and he said, you know, I'm not a Ford guy, but I love this car. I do too. You know. Well, so. like I said in the parking lot last night, I didn't. I didn't know you nothing. I didn't right. nothing about the car. Right. I just thought, wow, what a beautiful car that is. It right. really is. Right. Yeah. I'll have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how you found. Did you find it on the internet in Miami for sale? eBay. 
No. Uh, eBay. Shut up. Yes, eBay back in uh, 2018 on eBay. And I uh, uh, called the guy and, and uh, made him an offer, and, and uh, he said, okay. So, and it was a one-family-owned car. He sold that to build the 4040 he had. And I said, I would have never sold it if this was my parents' car. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It just didn't make sense. So that me. means it's a two-owner. Basically. You're the second Basically. owner. No, it Basically. is, yeah. Yeah, I was the second owner. Wow. <laughs> Well, you've been holding back on us. You didn't tell us that. <laughs> yeah. And a good custodian, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm glad you drive it. I yeah. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've had a show car, and I appreciate show cars. You know, trailered cars. All, and I've been right. down that road. I, 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 I do appreciate it because it takes it to another level. But at this point in my life today, I like driving my car. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, I think right. that there's a lot to be said for that. And I, it looks as though that most of the people here do the same thing and have the same feeling about That's it. That's what this organization's about. You know, if it's, they say if it's trailered, it's stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Something that. to be said for that. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at what looks like another, four. is that a Ford over there, that convertible yeah, that I is. see there? Galaxy. That blue? 63. 63 Galaxy, you know him? No. You need to know him. <laughs> well, you all obviously have a Ford thing going. Right, right. You yeah. know, I like all cars. I appreciate them all. I've had hun- over 100 cars in my lifetime, and I've had, I grew up Mopar, uh, 68 Roadrunner was my yeah, car. Yeah, everybody kind of goes through the Mopar you know, phase. Well, my family was Mopar, and, and but I was the Lone Ranger again in high school because I was the only one with a Mopar. I had the '68 Roadrunner. I was 15 years old, which wasn't a good idea, but but uh, well, you're still with us. It's a matter of perspective. You didn't wrap yeah. it around a tree. Well, I did. Um, my dad had a service station at the time, and he had a '66 Sport Fury with a 440, actually from the factory with 440. And me and him uh, raced one night coming home from work. <laughs> and I said, well, at least if I get thrown the in family jail. That's yeah, the family <laughs> goes to jail together, stays <laughs> together. I said, you know, I can't get in trouble because Dad's going to jail with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, a family plan. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I like them all. I, I don't care if it's a Rambler or if it's. So you would know, you say that your dad was the one that kind of uh, got you going into the love oh, of yeah. cars? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, he started taking me to drag races when I was like five years old. And uh, there was a drag strip not many people remember in Dallas called the the Circle, uh, just a little outlaw track. And uh, if I remember correctly, you had to run across the track to get to the concession stand. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end of the track, there was a pond down there, and if you wasn't on the brakes hard, you was going in water. In the water. You were going to stop. <laughs> you were going to stop. So. Wasn't there also, uh, was it Green Valley Raceway? Green Valley. I was there many Green, times. Yeah. I, I raced there a lot in high school. Where I, was that? Uh, Smithfield, Texas. It's over Fort Worth area. Gotcha. And uh, it was a great facility. Yeah. And uh, they had a road race course also there. Uh, you know, I just, it was. What is it, Holmes now? Uh, I don't, you know. Over there, they've got where Green Valley was. They've got Green Valley Elementary School. You can go in an Albertsons, and there's a poster of Green Valley Raceway there. It, it, they've really kind of kind of remember their history, yes, even though yes. it's not there. Yes. Well, that's good. It's good. Yes. Well, it's great to talk to you. It, and it's a it, pleasure to meet well, you, well, and we love well, your car. Okay. Yes. And, yes. And, and what else do you want? Money now? <laughs> Good health is all I want. Oh, I'm into that. <laughs> yeah, we all do. And uh, but, uh, well, uh, and good luck on your uh, jaunt over to Temple in the fall. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Well, you bet. Yeah. yeah, and we hope to see you again. I hope so. You know, if we see get in we'll, Temple, we'll see him at the hotel. Yeah, at the hotel. I'll be there tonight too. Uh, well, you know, we're leaving this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, okay. we'll we'll say good words to the uh, the hotel owner. Okay, great. Hopefully, we'll see you all in Temple. Okay. Well, that's yeah, a thought. I, I wrote it down. And we'll okay. see you next year if we don't. Okay. Yeah, Ribs and Rods is on Facebook, so you can contact them like that. So <laughs> Sounds good. I time now for a quick break here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. And I don't guess we're going to because uh, uh, something's happened here and it's all gone away, David. Uh, it says, owner, sign in. And, oh, uh, well, there it is, but it's not. It went to sleep. That's That's a Mars thing. 
<laughs> no, he, Myers he, is up. He, he's you know, wide he awake. sleeps a lot. He's wide All awake. Right. Time now for a quick break here on the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show from the Lone Star Street Rod Association, 49th Annual State Run. We're out here at Hewlett Park, and we hope that you'll stay with us. We'll be back after this. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Welcome, welcome back to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. <laughs> this has been a mess this morning. My computer blew up. The camera it, blew over. Camera blew over. Um, I, I'm on the wrong format. I, everything is not what it's supposed to be, but apparently it is it's, it's supposed to be. It's going to be a good think. day. Huh? It's going to be a good day. Yeah, well, it, I like it. As soon as we figure this out. What are you doing over there? Are you trying to get some video up? Yeah, I'm trying to get uh, this all went away for I a think minute. that I think that besides the mosquitoes that are here in the park that They're were earlier, bit. David, no. well, David's got that odor about it. Well, you know, it's only the female mosquito that bites. Mm. Really? Yeah. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, only the female mosquito. Well, bites. that's what's wrong with me. Yeah. <laughs> Getting all chewed up, are you? Time now for Jeff's Motor Minute. Oh, yeah, the Motor Minute. We got a picture. We got a picture. So uh, the Andretti saga continues in the Formula One controversy. Uh, and the controversy, this is uh, Mafia. Ma Maf How do you pronounce that? Maffe. Maffe versus Andretti. I didn't, I've never well, heard of Maffe. Maffe, the controversy stems from a decision made by the Colorado businessman Greg Maffe who is the CCO, uh, CEO of Liberty Media, which owns Formula One. Check that out. Uh, they wanted to shut down the efforts of General Motors and the Andretti family to become the next F1 dynasty. As a result, lawmakers in our government, they're filing an anti-competitive contact, <laughs> conduct, I should say, against that gentleman. Uh, he's facing serious backlash, among other details surfaced recently. They warned him that the legend Mario Andretti that he uh, told him he would, in his own power, in his best power, to stop whatever efforts he had to get into Formula One. So that blew everything up. Now, Formula One has experienced other things with Red Bull. Uh, they've got things with female, female employees, inappropriate messages and things. Uh, it's very, very nasty for them. I am, again, on the Andretti side. We're going to support Michael and his team and Andretti Global. I'm on their team. So we'll see what happens in the next uh, go-round. So that's it. Yeah. All right. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Are we back on? <laughs> are we, I don't know. Are we? Didn't know we were off. All right. I didn't either. 
U.S. Senator Joe Manchin said on Tuesday he was urging U.S. companies to sue the Treasury Department. Here we go. Over the local content rules it set for companies to receive clean energy tax credits under the Inflation Reduction Act. Longtime West Virginia lawmaker told U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen to go yell somewhere else during a hearing of the Senate Appropriations Committee that U.S. manufacturers are being damaged by the content rules, which he said to Treasury had halved from the original language in the law. Go, Joe. Go, Joe. I think that's a hand cleaner, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of an orangey... Very no, uh, that, aromatic. No, that, no, orange that, that, that's orange. That's another. That's another brand. Oh, but does the same thing. Very, uh, or, yeah. Very pumicey. Pumicey, yeah. Somebody, somebody's got uh, an air wrench going on there behind us. Apparently, they're air wrenching. They're air wrenching over there. Okay, well, there's one. Is that like story. air drumming? It is kind of like that. It's making sure. Toyota Motor Company still reeling from a rash of misconduct at Group companies Uh is embroiled in a new scandal and will halt sales of three models in the home market Japan after the automaker found that it had conducted inadequate vehicle verification including for safety tests Mazda Honda Suzuki Yamaha were also caught in similar certification testing missteps under a review prompted by Japan's Ministry of Transportation so the homeboys are over there slapping wrists, apparently, yep, going, they are. They're uh-uh, trying. you can't be doing none of that. Okay, well, well that's just fine. Things are coming to light. A lot of stuff's been behind the scenes in secret. No more. Apparently so. But who was to know? Yeah. Transparency. We didn't. Pardon me? We Transparency. didn't. Transparency. Transparency. Well, I, I, according to the story, I've got a feeling that they didn't mean to do it. They just didn't know they were doing it. But how do you have a bajillion dollar company and go, oh, I didn't know we weren't supposed to do that. Hmm. Or I didn't know that we were supposed to do that. Well, it, Don't you pay people a lot it, of money to know that information? Well, that's, that's what I was going to say. You know, at the CEO level, you know, you got 100,000 employees under you. Somebody gets paid to do that. You don't necessarily have to I bet to you they ain't that. getting paid no more. No more. No more, no more. Because no more, uh, no more, they are no in more. trouble and they're going away. You're fired, sir. Okay. I think Donald Trump had a show about that. I think he did. Yep. Well, uh, we're here at the Hewlett Park in the 49th Annual State Run of Lone Star Street Rod Association. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back right here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Everyone at the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise in at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex and Katy, thank you for participating in the best cruise in around and look forward to seeing you again. You'll hear about the next cruise in date right here on In Wheel Time. Next time you're in the West Houston Energy Corridor area, be sure and stop in at the original Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex at I-10 and Highway 6 or the Katy location on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard. When passing through Beaumont or College Station, stop in and have Loopy's award-winning beef fajitas and frozen margaritas. There's always a celebration at Loopy Tortilla. Loopy Tortilla founder Stan Holt and his wife Sheila are winning racers on the NHRA drag racing circuit and have a collection of hot rods and classics that everyone appreciates. Look for them at the next Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in. The date will be announced soon and will once again be held at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex on 99 and Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 and Katy. We'll give you all the details right here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show and online. Donations benefit God's Garage. We'll see you then. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, 
Twitch, and our InRealTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.